How you doing out there, folks? Well, here's another one of my videos. This is the, I call it the Invisible Man sequels. Because I'm doing this against Merrick Bank. So this is what I've been calling it. In case you haven't viewed any of these videos. They're unscripted. Of course, I'm just doing this as I go along. Okay, this is the Invisible Man versus Merrick Bank and the Robot. This is part six. And so far, I've done six of these, but I've done more videos than that. I've been doing this for about a month. Because, you know, when, you, when a bank wants to harass you, they really know how to do it. I've been through this before. You know, over the years. But right now, I got ticked off at this bank. Because we had gotten this card in, in 20... Yeah, 2018. And at that point in time, I was paying our bills for about eight years. Everything on time. It was the best that our credit was, you know, for a while. Both of our credit. Marie's credit was a little bit better because I was trying to pay some of the bills down. Well, we might order stuff. Then all of a sudden, I don't order for a while. I just keep paying. We both had these store accounts, these catalog cards. You know, you have to buy from them the stuff. They're not that bad, you know. They don't even charge a late fee. Most of those. If you're late, they may call you, but not like this. Not like what I've been getting from Merrick Bank. Because MasterCard Visa is a little bit different. So actually, that was really the only new card in 2018 that we got, I'm pretty sure. That was it. So I wasn't getting any more credit. There was a lot of offers came through, but I didn't bother with it. It just so happens... That it was in Marie's name and we both weren't too happy you know the way it was with you know with our health conditions and you know it, it just was a little bit boring there you know we're not getting around like we were before and also you know when this came I said well because Marie's lack of interest was getting you know more and more I noticed it not so much you know day to day if, if I would have been seeing her maybe couple months I didn't see her and then saw her I might notice it more but, you know when you're with somebody every day you don't notice it quite as much you know it's just a slow decline okay so the mail came and I'm looking through the bills and I said here Marie this is for you I didn't even really look at it that good she opened it up and no not too much and all of a sudden her, her personality changed because she was suffering from that General anxiety disorder, that's what they diagnosed it with. So, well, she looked it over, and all of a sudden, Frankie, Frankie, I said, what is it, Marie? Merrick Bank. She said, I never heard of them, but I said, she said, I don't care, they want to give me $600. I mean, to us, $600 is a lot. So at the time, I said, well, what else does it say? It says something else here, but I don't understand it. It says double the credit line. What does that mean? So I said, let me look it over. I looked it over. I said, yeah, Marie, this is a, it's not a bad offer. It says that if we make seven on-time payments, then right after that, they double the credit line. That means you'll get another 600. That means 1,200 altogether. But you know we're going to probably use it before that happens. He said, oh, I want it, I want it. He said, so that means if we keep making seven payments, we keep getting 600 more? No, that's not the, what it means. It says double. Double means that's it. Now, if it said triple, that means we would make another seven payments after the first seven payments, so we would keep getting another 600. That's not a bad offer if they did it. See, what this kind of offer does, they should consider it, because this kind of offer, it means that someone's going to pay it. So that means for seven months, they're not going to be late. Then you're not going to have, you won't be calling them. That'll stop some of the calls. If they did it for another seven, seven months. So there's over a year that they wouldn't be calling because most people are going to pay that. And unless they had a problem, sure, it could still happen. But I'm pretty sure with that kind of offer, that would cut down on all these calls because there wouldn't be as many people late. The more people had that account. So back to this now. I explained it to her. It's in your name. 
You want it. She says, oh, I want it. I want it. They want to give it to me. I want it because we really didn't have that much available credit, you know. If she wanted something, I would get it one way or another. You know, I would use our, our bank account or whatever. But she wanted to, you know, have a card that she could actually use to order from the telephone or what, you know, whatever. So I said, okay. Now, do you want to do it over the phone or do you want to do it by the internet? She says, I don't want to do it over the phone. Is there a, a paper application we can get? I said, no, they're not doing it. It's paperless. They want to do it that way. It's quicker, too. So you want to get it. I said, okay, you don't want to do the phone, right? I mean, I'll be here to prompt you. But she said, I'm afraid that I might say something wrong, find something wrong. I said, okay. I know she's not too much for the computer because she never was. She said, I'm paying more attention to the computer than I am to her. So I said, okay, Marie, let me go over to the computer. Went over where the computer was, sit down at the table. I set it up and I said, look, I'm going to punch it in. I mean, I could do it as I know all the information, but I let her do it because it was her account. Okay, I set it all up and I had it on the screen and I told her, because I know she could type. She said, oh yeah, I can type. It's no problem. But you know how the cursor, you have to keep setting it up. So I said, okay, it's going to have the name, address, phone numbers and all that. I said, we'll do that first. So she filled it all in. Then it got to authorize user, and I set it. You know, I set it up. She says, "Oh yeah, that that's gonna be I, that'll be you." So she put my name in. We shared everything, all over all the years we were together. So she put me in there. I said, "Okay, that's good." <clears throat> so now we're coming to the end of it, and there's some kind of disclaimer there. She said, "What's all that writing? What's all that?" I said, um, "Yeah, I kind of read it, but I knew what it was." I said, "Look, it says." You have to give them permission to call you on the cell phone, you know, so they can service the account, and because they, they use an auto dollar, and you know, they might want to leave a text message, whatever. You have to give them permission to do it. They're not allowed unless you do. He said, so what? I don't care if they call me. I said, okay. I'm just telling you that you have to give them permission to do it. She even said, what happens if I don't? I said, Marie, they're going to resend the offer. Yeah, that's a heck of a thing. You give somebody a pre-approved base that they're credit worthy and now they're going to tell you you're not going to get it if you don't okay them to call you. She said, I don't care. Just put it on there. I don't, you're going to be paying anyway, so, right? Yeah, I said, okay. So I don't, I'll go into that a little bit later about that but that call-in thing. But she, she, everything went through. You know, I checked it and it said the cards would be coming in 7 to 10 days and all that. Okay, so in the meantime, I figured I better go over this with her, you know, about ordering over the phone. Because she, she's going to, if they ask her social security date of birth, she'll, she'll give it. She thinks she has to give it. Because she hasn't really ordered anything recently. I said, Marie, don't give out your information over the phone. You got the credit card, you give the credit card number, the expiration date, and there's a security card code on the back. That's all you should have to give. Don't sign up for no monthly payments, and I'll do one-time payment. Because in case there's a problem, then that's going to be hard to stop them because they want to keep billing you. So I, I wouldn't do that. So she said, "Okay, I understand." I went over that a lot with her. So when the car comes, I know right away she wants to order something. You know, keep the orders down a little bit. You know, you got six hundred dollars. You know, we both are going to use it. I'm going to use it to pay other bills. You know, I'm gonna, I might buy something, but not. <laughs> Want to get down some of the other accounts? Okay, so okay, that was good. The cards came. It's about a week. Then when the cards came, we each got one, and they were nice. I'm going to show you the card. Let's see, right here. See? There it is. <clears throat> Let's see here. See it? Merrick Bank. Same account number, expiration June 2023. So you see that card, huh? It's her name on there and all. Now I, <coughs> I got the exact same card. So, <coughs> excuse me. So you want to see a good look. <coughs> this has something to do with the situation. Okay, I want to put it back. <coughs> now let's see. 
That was Marie, right? Let me see if I can do this. Here we go. Look at this. That's my name on there. See it? Eric Banks. So you see that. Let me get the light just right there. It is. Now we both have a car, the same account number. Hey, look at that. Okay, you can't tell if I'm the authorized user or not. Or I'm the card holder. See, a lot of banks, they don't do that. A lot of banks might have a different account number for the authorized user, so you could track the purchases. There it is. Now you see it. She picked that design. Nice, with an eagle and the flag. Okay, so I'll take that away. Okay, so you, you see that now. That's very important in the situation that I'm in with Merrick Bank. This went on for a while. And, you know, we both used the card. This went on past seven months. I mean, we got to double the credit line and kept using it. And Marie started getting sicker. And she went to the hospital, then the nursing home for long-term care. So, I'm still paying all the bills at that point. But then as she got a little bit better for a while, for about four months, she was getting better. I went there a lot. Used to bring the things in. Yeah, would you believe it? What do you think she asked me? She said, Frankie, by the way, you still paying Merrick Bank? I said, oh yeah, no problem. She says, I don't want to mess that up. It's my credit, you know. I said, no, it's, it's okay. And I said, you want anything? She told me all the things she wanted me to get. Cosmetics, different things though in a nursing home. You know, they're not going to give you. So I was buying all the things. Everything was going pretty good there for a while. And then she started to get, I saw her getting a little bit worse, you know, started to, like during the fifth month, but I tell these people there, but with them understaffing and, you know, that they were, you know, and the neglect, you know, on the weekdays, there's a lot of people working on the weekend, it's hardly anybody. So you mean to tell me you're not going to get the same care on the weekend that you do on the weekday? I was having a problem with that, with that nursing home. So I went there like I think three days close together. And then finally, uh, I think it was like I went on a Saturday and then what happened was uh, she wasn't doing too good that day. I noticed it because I went there, I'm saying to myself, she's almost unconscious there, like she was doped up and all, I couldn't get her to wake up. I asked her roommate, and her roommate said, well, she hasn't been eating the last day or so. She doesn't want to eat, she just lays there like she's sleeping all the time. They bring the food and take it back. I said, why don't they call me? They should have. I was just there a few days before that. Well, I didn't know what to do. I told them, no, don't worry. We know what to do. It's 24-7. There's always someone checking on her all the time. And I said, okay, you know, I didn't like it, you know. So I start trying to get her up. She couldn't even open her eyes. I try to get her, you know, some response out of her. Finally, I start massaging her feet. I usually did that at home to wake her up. I start doing that, and she said, stop that, Frankie. So she saw, I got some response, so I figured, well, Maybe she knows I was there and all, so I went home and I wasn't too happy. I was going to probably go back the next day. So 3 o'clock in the morning, I get a call that she passed away. They tried to revive her, but they didn't. Why didn't they do it earlier? But of course, you know, I have some something against that nursing home as it is, but this is, I don't want to go into that too much right now. So when that all happened, I'm really upset, you know, because that's, you know, we were together over 40 years. For me, it's a big loss. Now I'm all by myself. So, of course, I couldn't pay the bills, you know, right now and after that because the income was cut in half. So what I did was I I started sending letters out and certified letters, cease and desist letters and all. And finally, I was just going through the computer on the Internet and I punched in one of the banks. And this lawyer's name come up and I figured, well, you know, I put my name and all, and he calls me back. I told him the banks and all, and he said, look, I can help you with it. Don't worry, I can 
I can stop the calls and all that. And so he sent me agreement and all, and I signed it, and I sent him the, you know, I had phone logs I was keeping all along. So then he worked on all those cases, but I was still paying Merrick Bank. This is where this Merrick Bank thing comes in. I kept paying them. So it got to a point after huh, a few months I was paying, you know. So finally I got to a point here I can't pay. So I got to look at how much money I get, how much I have to pay, and I, I didn't have all the other bills to pay. So what I did was I, I stopped paying. Not in the first month. I got the statement that says, you know, pay the past due or something, or it's going to collection or something. They probably have <coughs> collection there and they're, you know, in one of their departments. So next thing I know, this is in November of 2019, and the phone starts ringing. It says Merrick Bank. On the caller ID, they start calling on both numbers, the cell phone and the landline. Remember when I told Marie about that, about giving permission to do that? You know, even though that, that permission probably shouldn't have counted. Because they combined that permission with another offer. That should have been separate. That was supposed to be separate when they asked permission. That's not supposed to be at the same time they give you that offer. Because what happens if they have a provider that's doing that service, you know, making those calls? Well, they're the ones you're supposed to give permission to. Because they're the ones making those calls. So that was in right there to begin with. So when they're making these calls, they don't know Marie passed away already. So those calls are directed to her. Cell phone and landline. Both. They were, this went on for about two weeks. I figured, let me keep track and see, you know, on both. I had a phone log for each. For each phone. Kept track. I noticed it was, all together, it was 19 calls on the cell phone. And I think it was 43 on the landline. Almost double, you know. I don't know how they worked it out. They were calling every day, Sunday and all. I know one day, I just noticed it now. They called seven times. Five on the landline and two on the cell. That was all day long. Between both phones, I was getting all those calls. Now, I was getting them. They were for Marie. So, of course, I got the lawyer again. And he stopped the calls. They stopped the, the cell phone first. And then two days later, the landline. So I kept track of it, so I know. And the, the lawyer, I guess he files a, the litigation. They stopped the calls, of course. So that stopped. And I see said he's working on it and all. I didn't bother too much anymore. I was glad that that stopped. But they were you know, calling on that cell phone. See, I'm an authorized user. So I put in the litigation against them. So it's in my name. But it doesn't really matter. Because the phone numbers are both in my name too. Now say Marie had the account by herself. Nobody on it. And say a family member was there and they start calling. The family member, they probably wouldn't... If they tried to do a litigation, it might not have went through. Because they would have said, this person's not on the account. And they, they, they were getting the calls, but it probably wouldn't go through like this. But it's different now. Because I'm on that account. See, it works like two ways. It's in my favor either way. So I'm the one putting the litigation. And I am on the account. I showed you the cards. Now, I have a card in my name. That doesn't make me responsible for the account because, like I said, I'm not a joint card holder. I'm not the, a co-signer. And we're not even legally married. We both have our own name, so they're really calling me about somebody else's account. So I think I, I bring all that up. That's why I showed those cards. Because this exists. This is not something that I decided to make up. And that you saw the cards and all, so... This is all that proves that if, if it comes down to it, I can't say that I'm not on the account or something. But yet, they can't hold me responsible for that account because it's in different names. And we don't have a, st a state that they can go after, neither one of us. So, I mean, all this call in is nonsense. Like I said, I'm putting, I'm going to make sense out of nonsense, you know, because that, that's their fault because they got this system set up. 
and they just want to call, 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 call everybody, not just me or Marie. When, the, when it was late for the first month or so, somebody should have called from the company and try to find out why and let, let you know. But if they do that, then they, they can't call you every day like that. They call enough the message and say, this is for Marie, and we'd like to work with you and see why you're late, a reminder that you're late, so you can make a payment, and if you have any problems, call us to try to find out why. They didn't do that. So they don't know why. So the calls, those calls are definitely have to be harassing calls. Because what's it for? Is it because you're late? Is it trying to make you pay? What, what is it? Yeah, you know, I, I, the, if they're not harassing phone calls, I don't know what, what you call it then. Like I said, they should have called and tried to find out first. Or even send in a notice in the mail and say, you know, when you get your, your statement, and put it on there and say, you're late, give us a call. We want to work with you. But they know if they call you and leave a message, you know, a live person calls you, you're not supposed to make contact for seven days after that. Whether I call them or they call us. So they know all that, but they want to start that, you know, the harassing call. They want to start that right away. So that's why it's like that. Because they, they know the law and they're, they're circumventing the law. Because if the law says you're not supposed to be making those calls, between 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. it's okay. It doesn't say you're allowed to call all you want. You can call. There's, there's no how many calls you can make. It's not like they can only make one call a day. So they go ahead because they, they shows you they want to call and it shows they want to harass you because why are they asking permission? If you give them permission, it's okay then to use that auto dollar? I don't think it's okay. It shouldn't be. Now, they know that it's a violation. So they figure most people don't know that. They're going by, I guess, the track record of those calls, you know, that they found out that it's, it works, you know. Well, I don't think so. I think it's, it's not good, not good business. But so what do they do? All these accounts that they keep calling, they eventually write them off, a lot of them. And what do they do? Send offers out to get more customers. So that's what they say. It's like you're putting you out the pasture, you know, when they start calling you and you can't pay. I don't think we should be harassed. And I know when it's harassment and I know when it's not. And to top this off, you know, it wasn't bad enough. They called like that, you know, you know, whether I got the calls of Marie, they still did it. I am on the account, so. And the phone numbers are my name, like I said. But what, what made this so, make me so upset with these people because I put the litigation in and the lawyer I have is very good because I used them before very good really excellent so what happened now what the problem was starting in January what do you think happened January 2nd right after New Year's what do you think happened the call started I saw Mary Bank on the caller ID I said what first I thought maybe because of the litigation they might be trying to call me to talk to me about it but I figured, no, I got the lawyer for that. They're not going to do that. So a couple calls, then a couple more calls, and all of a sudden, four a day. I said, wait a minute. I let it go for a couple of weeks again. Now, I know what it was for, the same account. It had to be. They probably still thought they're calling for Marie. Because the lawyer, you know, it's in my name, the litigation. So I think... Then I start saying, oh, wait a minute, they're retaliating against me, what, for putting litigation against them? Retaliation, they can get in trouble for that. And plus, I'm getting harassed now again over that account. All over again, but they didn't call on the cell phone. I wonder why. That proves it to you right there. They're admitting that they're wrong. Why don't they call on the cell phone? Why? I dare them. Why didn't they do it? No. They didn't do it. Because they always have a case pending on that. They had to know. Because a month and a half passed. And they have all different departments. The collection department, the legal department, the, uh, I guess, the billing department, all those different customer service, all that. Unless they don't know what they're doing, they're not connected. Maybe since it went to the legal department, maybe it never got to the, the other departments yet. So a month and a half passed that they start calling. 
Why did they call on the cell phone? So I have a lawyer for that. So I don't know. He knows. He might either put that's going to go against the first case, or he might make another case for that separate. I mean, whatever he wants to do, it's up to his discretion. He knows what to do. I know he does. He's experienced and all. And he's a super lawyer, too, so I'm not worried about that at all. I'm doing all this because I just didn't like it. And I figure if there's anybody out there that's having problems with Merrick Bank or any bank, this information might help you. But you don't have to put up with those calls. And you can't tell me they're not. I, I haven't been harassed. Okay, so these calls in January. They didn't call on Sunday. I wonder why. They did before. Why didn't they call on Sunday? See, this is what the harassment, it, it shows it. See, by keeping a phone log, have all the information, the date, the day, the time, and any comments or anything, the phone number they used, right? You have all this information. You look at it and say, look at that. They call me Saturday four times. Kind of close together, too. And then Sunday, nothing. So what, what am I saying? Oh, it feels good. No calls. Relax, you know. Then Monday, again, I said, oh, maybe the lawyer stopped it, you know. Or maybe they, they found out they should, you know, because of the litigation, they stopped. Uh-uh. Then Monday afternoon, 4, 4.30, something like that, the call started. And I know it's going to be four calls. Like they might call 4.15, 5.20, 6.30, maybe 7.05, something like that. Once I got the fourth call, I knew, so then I would write it down. So you can see, if that's not harassment, I don't know what you call it then. That's how bad they, they want to make those calls. So bad, you know. And that's one of the, the, the problems, you know. For a person that's having problems, you mean to tell me I'm going to be, I paid them too. I was trying to pay. I thought maybe, well, I got a card in my name and all. And Marie really liked that, that account. So, and she, you know, one of the last things she told me to make sure I pay it. But she knows that I can't can pay if I can't pay. My income is cut in half. I couldn't really pay right now. But I still tried, you know. But then after those calls in, in, in November of 2019, you know, I had a lawyer that stopped it. But for them to start up in January, that's something. It went through the whole month. By the time I waited, you know, a couple of weeks to see, you know, how many calls, if it was just going to be the landline, and it was. So I waited. I contacted the lawyer. He he's going to reach out to them. He's going to make them stop. It didn't stop for a while. Finally, it did stop. I guess by so it went all their channels, huh? Didn't mean to tell me they can do that. I guess they worry about it later, huh? They got lawyers for that and all, so I guess they're going to decide because, like in this litigation that I have, you know, the lawyer even put down, you know, all the laws they violated, how much they could have to, to pay per call that they made. Not only that, he put down times that they called. He got it off my my phone log, of course, and he and they were close together. It's an example, you know. He didn't put all of the calls. So if they look at their list, you know, and they see it matches, they're going to know that I couldn't have that if they didn't call me. So they already know now they can't say that they didn't call me. And, you know, you can, the phone company can give you the printout too. You know, and they'd have to show it. If they went to quarter and they'd have to show that, their phone lock. So that, that, that's the way that went down, like that. That's why I say it's important to have that. You know, if you're going to call this lawyer. Because he doesn't charge anything. It's a free consultation. And there's no obligation. If you decide you don't want to do it, it's okay. Be glad if he'll take your case. Because he's going to help you if you're getting these calls. He, he, he's a consumer advocate attorney. So you're getting a, a, a really a, a, good, a good person to help you. You see, the problem here is most people have these problems, I know. Like, listen to what I say here. There's somebody out there that's probably getting harassing phone calls. It doesn't have to be from Merrick Bank. It could be from any bank. But you think, oh, well, how can I get a lawyer? You know, everybody knows how lawyers are expensive. 
You know they are, so it'll cost me more than what I owe Mary Bank. Or any bank. But I'm saying here, this lawyer, there's plenty of them, you know. I found him when I looked in online and his name came up and he called me. Because he's trying to help the consumer. Okay, so if you want to contact them, you know, if you're having any problems like this, remember, you don't have to pay. You don't have to pay him. You don't have to pay court costs or nothing. So he's, you know, you, you can't, re there's nothing, really nothing to lose. Okay, I'm going to give you his name and his information. It's Paul Mankin. M-A-N-K-I-N. And it's toll-free number 800-219-3577. I'll repeat it. 800-219-3577. That's all you really need. Does it have a secretary there doing normal business hours? He may even answer. Or you can leave a message and guarantee he will get back to you. I know that for sure. So I'll give his information in the description. I, I usually do, you know. Now, I'll mention one more thing about it. He's in San Diego, California. And I'm in Philadelphia, so it really doesn't matter. Because the laws apply all over. So that, that has no, no, no bearing on it at all. Because I have plenty of cases with him. And in a different, you know, settlement, you know. This Merrick Bank, I won a jury trial, and I don't think they really won it. Because they might have to settle because of that. Because I, I would rather go to the jury. Because it looks, they're a big company, and I'm just a common man, you know. And I'm older and all, too, elderly. So they, you know, the jury might favor more. They know that. And they're violating the laws. That's the only thing, you know, about this. So, you know, think about it. You know, if you, you don't want to... Because these calls, I don't know how long they would keep doing it. So I've had banks call for months. They'll keep calling you. You know, it varies, you know, from bank to bank. Now, once they start that, I mean, they may... You know, some of them will start like that with four calls like that. Then it might go up to five, six, I don't know. To, to keep bothering you, annoying you. are not supposed to do that. You know, harassment takes many different forms, you know. In this case, it's those calls. Now, with those calls again, okay, I'm concentrating mostly on the calls. Because that, when they're making all these calls, a robot's doing it, automatic dialing, whatever you want to call it. It's not a live person. Not one person has ever called in all those calls. I got over 60 calls in November 2019. Now, in January 2020, I got over 80 calls, and not one was dialed by a person. So that shows you right there, they're using that auto dialer. On the, on the landline, is different. Because their name comes up on the caller ID. They're supposed to put their name and number, and they do. And that's the, you know, they're, they're, they're abiding by the law there. By doing that. So, you know who's calling? I check the numbers. They, there's like six different ones, and they all go to the call center. Now, on the cell phone, for, for, you know, the one I have, I don't know how your cell phone, the caller ID, if you have it, but on the cell phone I have, it comes up the number, the phone number, and it may come up, you know, Pennsylvania, New York, whatever on the, on the cell phone. Or if it's an 800 number, it might just come the number. So that's the reason why they're not supposed to call you like that. Unless they're going to leave a message, unless they're going to talk to you. See, what I did was, I knew the numbers. You know, when I'm doing the, the phone log. So when I had all the numbers, I went into the cell phone. And when they call me, you know, the number they call, I put it, I put it in the contacts and I put Merrick Bank. So after about a, a few days, about a week, when they start calling on both, I had the number. You know, I, it said Merrick Bank. You know, when, it, when the call came in. Because the call could come in, they could put restricted. Or private. You know, you dial star 67. And that could be done that way. Well, then you can't add it in your contacts. Because it's restricted. But they put the number so I could. And the number was valid. 
I'm just telling you all these things that, you know, you should be aware of. Because if you're getting any calls from any, any bank, including Merrick Bank, and it, it's on your cell phone, that's something you better watch out because that, you may not know that, that that's a violation. You know, if you gave permission, look here again with Merrick Bank to show you how bad that they want to call you. Like, you know, on, when you get that slip to send in the mail, you know, on the back of it, it's got change of address and phone number, right? In the very bottom, it has work and sell. How come it doesn't have home? The reason it doesn't have home is because the work, they're supposed to give them permission to call you at work if you have a work number. If you don't, you can put the home phone in there and the cell phone. It says on there, you're giving them permission to call you with an auto dollar. It's got it right there underneath the numbers. So again, more about that with that calls, that they want to call you. They really think that that's something, you know. I, I don't think so. Because if I get to enough people here with these videos I'm making, well, I think that they start getting a lot of complaints. You know, a lot of litigation. They might start realizing it's costing them more money by doing that than not doing that. That's probably the reason why they don't want to hire a lot of people to make the calls. Better they just do it all at once, you know, with that auto dialing, you know, the robot. Better they do it that way. They got everybody that's laid on there. They already have all the information. They don't seem to care what the reason is. They just want to keep calling, calling, calling. And and they're not, you know, their business goes on as usual. It's not like they have to do be, do something special to do that. They're not just calling me. That's on a list every day. Some go on, some come off. So as soon as you contact a lawyer and he contacts them, he usually stops it right away. Because all they got to do is take the number out. As soon as they take your number off the list, that's it. it the, the calls keep going the way it is. They must make. A, can you imagine trying to dial calls all day long if you had to do it yourself? Even if you have a button where it dials the calls. I mean, a person would have a problem because if someone answered it and the person's dialing it, that's going to stop them from calling because they're talking to somebody. That's why these calls is, that's why they're doing it. They may get results, according to them, or they wouldn't be doing it. They must be getting results. So for the ones, like maybe, like me, or, or say somebody out there listens to me, you know, gets a lawyer and puts a litigation and wins, wins the case, well... That's a cost of doing business. That way, they really didn't get in trouble. And, and by paying it off, that's it. It's just a, a bad debt, you know. Because I've had cases already with this lawyer. And one of them, I owe like three accounts with the same bank. It wasn't a big, well-known bank. You know, for those store cards, those mail order accounts. I had three of them. I think it was close to $3,000 over eight years. And I paid on time and all. They start calling me the same way, like the way Mary Bank was, and then I got the lawyer, and it's one of the banks he deals with. It took a while, once he put in the litigation and all. He called me and said, Frank, I got a settlement, if you agree with everything. They're paying him his legal fee, whatever it is, and the court cost, and they said, the $3,000 that you owe on the three accounts, they're going to mark it paid. So you shouldn't hear nothing from that anymore. And then I got some money out of it, a few hundred dollars, because of the violation that they did. So that deal was all right, you know. It was all cleared, and all, and that was the end of it. I had another one similar where I got something, but they didn't give, you know, they want to work it out. They want to stay out of court because, see, I want to go to court. I mean, the lawyer has it on there that I'm the plaintiff and want a jury trial. Do they want to go through it? I know I probably won't even have to go, but if I did, I would. I don't care where it is. I want to go. I want to tell these people what I think about it, you know. So I hope, uh, you know, what I'm saying here, there's somebody out there. That's why I'm trying to do this as often as I can. You know, it's quiet in here now, of course, with no calls. The other day I was doing this and the phone rings. It was one of those telemarketers calling. It's, you know, you get those calls yet. But right now, you know, it's quiet. I can do this, so. And, you know, the fee, they do so many things, like the card that 
got double the credit line offer. It wasn't bad at all. It wasn't too bad. The only problem was there's no frills. You can't transfer a balance or none of that. They didn't set it up like that. It doesn't really have much. Still membership fee, authorized user fee, and of course a cash advance fee. I got a little ticked off with that. Because I'm transferring I'm not you know, in a way I am transferring if I'm if like say five accounts and they're twenty five dollars a month, you know, and I'm paying the minimum payment using that that visa, you know, the Merrick Bank card. Okay, fine, it went through and all. But we had enough credit for that. So I'm trying to get those other cards down or paid off, right? So what they did was they charged five dollars for each one. They called that cash advance fee. I'm pretty sure it was them, but I have other accounts. But this is the main account. The last account that we had together after all the accounts that we had. So you can see what can happen, you know. I, you know, I, I emphasize this a lot because this lawyer that I have, I, you know, I endorse him. I, I, I like it so much that what he did, you know, for me. I appreciate it so much. You know, that's why I say this testimonial, to me, it's like a testimonial. I'm not getting paid for it. He already paid me enough by helping me like he did. An awful lot just to get those, you know, that calling stop, you know. I, I, I'm under, you know, emotional distress, economic hardship and everything, you know. And I have no family or nothing. I'm doing this all by myself, you know. And I, I'm trying to stay where I am here. I'm doing all kind of things. You know, to try to make some money that I don't have anymore because it was cut in half when Marie passed away. Because we weren't legally married or anything. So with the Social Security, whatever was the, the most, you know, the highest amount, I got it. Because in, in her, they don't pay her because she passed away. When we started out together, if I would have gotten, you know, would have got married and contact Social Security, we would have got one check for both. And just give an example... Say both together we get sixteen hundred. You know, individually would be if you add it together it's sixteen hundred. But if I would have contacted Social Security, we would have got one check, it might have been twelve hundred. Now right now I would be getting twelve hundred instead of eight hundred. You know, so it's but you know, we didn't need a marriage license to stay together, you know. Because when I called Social Security about it, I couldn't get the survivor's benefit. Why? Because I don't have a marriage license. And one of those those agents told me the woman she was not too nice about it. She said, "Look, you don't you don't have the marriage license. You took a chance, and now you have to go by the rules now." So we took a chance on love, you know. And you know I didn't really like that. I mean, it's only two hundred fifty five dollars that the Social Security gives, but I couldn't get it because of that. And Mary Bank is going to hold me to this account. To say I owe it? Because the Social Security, because I didn't have the marriage license, didn't give me the survivor's benefit. So now how's Merrick Bank going to tell me I owe that when I don't have a marriage license? So Marie had her account, and I have my accounts. We have all different information. Plus, they're calling me about somebody else's account. Somebody else's bill. That's also in the litigation. So I'm being harassed over that also because of that. So I just want to bring all that up because I know every situation is different. Most people out there is not going to have this, and you, you could. You, you could be like we were together for a long time, and all of a sudden one, one of the parties pass away, and you have all these credit cards, and you can't pay, you know. So that's why you need a lawyer because of that. Because he has access to the legal system, and I couldn't do what he does. I mean, I know, you know, I know the whole story. You know, I wouldn't know how to to do the the litigation. I wouldn't know how to really type it in the way he does. You know, the way he words it and all, and put all the laws in and everything. I wouldn't know how to do all that. I could send a cease and desist letter if I want them to stop calling me and say, you know, cease and desist all communication with me. Send a certified mail, return receipt. But the creditors don't have to honor that. The debt collector is supposed to. So there's all these fine lines here, you know. Well, that's why you need a lawyer so much. Because there's just so much here. A lot of these laws go back a ways now. 
because I don't know way back I used to get harassed on the phone. People were calling then. They call you anytime. They were calling before eight o'clock in the morning, and even late at night I was getting calls. This is huh, thirty years ago. Yeah, and they, that's why all these laws came in to stop all that. Oh, they would threaten you that they're going to put your name on a list as a as a person who don't pay your bills. Or they're going to tell your neighbors. Oh, they're going to sue you. They're going to call the police. All these things they're not supposed to do. Say they're a lawyer when they're not. So this is why all these laws are in effect. So now it's evolved around with these these calls now. These harassing phone calls. The law does say they're not supposed to call you like that to annoy you. You can't tell me that I'm not annoyed. I was annoyed when they called in, you know, in November. But the lawyer stopped it right away. But it, to go a month and a half and then start calling me in January, that's when I really got ticked off. That's when I started doing this. I, say I, I said I'm bad-mouthing them. In a sense, I am, and in a sense, I'm not. A lot of people didn't even hear about Merrick Bank till I started this. Unless you have an account with them. Because they sent it all over those offers. So, if, if, if I'm bad-mouthing them, but they're harassing me though, it's alright, huh? I can't bad-mouth them? Actually, I don't think I'm really bad-mouthing them that much. I start thinking about it. I think that, in a way, <laughs> I'm advertising them. I'm telling people... Not to be later, they're going to start calling you. So I'm kind of helping them in a way indirectly by doing this. So if you're late, be careful. If you have an Mary Bank account, I, I would be very careful. Watch, check your bill and all. Make sure they're not add-on charges on there. Well, I mean, a lot of times I would write checks and paying all the bills and you know put them in the envelope, then mail them all out at once. I stopped doing that. I start paying over the phone because those late fees, they'll, they'll liable to hold it. You know, when you send the check in, they'll liable to tell these people that work there hold it, the mail, don't open it. You know, right away. Because if you, to say you the bills due on the fifteenth, okay, you get it there on the sixteenth. It's late. They charge you the late fee. So it, the, how would you like seeing the bill when it comes in? Wait a minute, my payment's on there, but there's a late fee. If you call them, they're going to say, no, you paid it after the 15th. Say the closing date is the 22nd. So if you would have got it the 23rd, I'd say it was late, but not the way they do it now. I know years ago it wasn't like that, because I used to pay, and I knew it. I had from, say it was the 15th, I knew I had at least a week in there, so I wouldn't be late. Not now. So what I did was I pay over the phone. If it was the 15th, I, I could pay on the 15th and I wouldn't be late. I don't want to send in checks out like that if they're going to get it or not. I don't want to pay a late fee if I didn't have to. But that's another one of the things that you have to, that these banks do. Unethical stuff. There's so much of it. The lawyers know. Any lawyers that deal with this kind of thing, you know, with this credit card, they, they, they know the laws. And they were probably updating it all the time, so they know any updates, they know. And so does the, the creditor. They know that, and the debt collectors. They know what to do. Because this debt right now, I mentioned it before, it's like a zombie debt. Because by rights, if they know Marie has passed away, and she, they can't collect it from me, I'm only an authorized user, we're not married, so there's no estate. So now that debt is considered, they have to write it off, or discard it, or whatever, that's it. When Marie passed away, that debt is, is passed away. But now, I think that I call it a zombie debt because they're trying to collect it from me. They brought it back to life again. Or it never they never discarded it or nothing yet because they're calling. But say later on now, after this passes, it's on their, their list, you know, you know, the public record. So somebody... Scavenger debt collectors start looking all that up, you know, the bank's records and all, and they see that on there. Whether it's going to say the person's deceased or not, I don't know. But say they get it, and they start calling. I start getting calls. It's a zombie debt, because they're bringing it back to life again. When it's gone, it's done. But I know that that, that happens a lot with these debt collectors. They buy debts from banks 
on pennies on the dollar, and they're collecting that money, and whatever they collect is like a profit. You didn't owe them that money when a debt collector is calling you. They act like they're working on behalf of the bank, and they're not. So I'm just bringing all that up so you know. But remember, if the lawyer, you get this lawyer, and he stops the calls, you still owe that money. It doesn't, you know, forgive the money. You still owe it. Maybe you can pay it, maybe in a few months if you get any money or get straightened out. It's possible. You know, it's a moral obligation. You know, I know I would if I had the money. I would pay. Because I just don't want to, you know, do that. You know, I don't want to have that on the record. But sometimes it can't be helped, you know. So you should know the statute of limitations. I know in Pennsylvania it's four years. So, uh... It won't apply in this case because that debt's already done, uncollectible. But on other accounts that I have, from the last payment you made, from that point on, so if the statute of limitations is four years, four years from that last payment, it's legally forgiven. So keep keep it in mind all this stuff, you know, because, you know, it, it can help you. I hope I'm helping somebody out there. I hope I'm not just taking up all this time because I've done quite a few of these videos. They're all a little bit different. I cover the same things. I might say it in a different way. I may add some things on, you know, trying to make it more clear. The main thing here is to get to somebody. I hope I'm getting to somebody out there that may be having a problem but don't really know exactly what to do. They think they have to put up with those calls. Merrick Bank or any bank is not above the law. Keep that in mind. They're not. That's why there's laws. To protect the consumer. Not to protect the banks. That's to try to keep them from doing the things they do. And they're still doing it. I don't say they all do. There's a lot of banks I know don't do that. They actually call you and talk to you or leave a message like they're supposed to. Not this, not this Merrick Bank. Mm-mm. Like I say, if, if you ever get an offer from them, I wouldn't take it, you know. I just wouldn't do it. I mean, it's up to you if you think you're going to never, you never know what can happen. I mean, you might be paying your bills. Like, yeah, I was paying our bills for eight years. That's the first time through all the years that we were together that I actually had the bills on time and our credit was getting a little bit better. Our credit scores were kind of close. Marie's was better than mine because I, I had more credit than her because I was paying... I had to pay some of hers down and off. Because the reason I know the credit score was one of the accounts that we had was a, I think it was a visa. And we each had an account. And when the bill came in, it had the credit score. So I was looking at the, I knew the credit score every month. I kind of liked that about that bank. Because they looked, you know, gave you the credit score from the month before. And I could see how it wasn't, it wasn't too bad, but I could see it wasn't, it wasn't going up that much. Because we had too much credit. Didn't have much available credit. And that's what causes that. The main thing is based on. The credit score is based on the payments. And, and I was making all the payments. For years. You know. But now it doesn't matter too much. Because now all these accounts. Are going to be written off I guess. Or go to collection. Or whatever. You know, so I can't do nothing about it right now. It's on the credit report for seven years. I'm not saying I couldn't get credit if I wanted it. You can get this, you know, the secured card where you put your money in a savings and you can use it. Well, why do all that? I'll just use my, my debit card from the bank. It's a MasterCard. Not only that, it's something that's really ironic here that just happened recently because I needed money. And I can't get low-income housing because of years of waiting lists or Section 8 or any of those things that I qualify for. I can't get it. So I started looking around and saying, you know, I heard about clinical trials, you know, and I figured, well, I know they pay you. I went to one for depression. They were advertising it. They pick you up and bring you back. It's, you know, it's kind of a ways from where I live. I went there. I took all the tests and all. They said, no, you don't qualify. I said, I'm not depressed enough. I said, well, I've been so depressed. It's normal for me, but got, they go by the test, you know. So they gave me a check for, I think it was $100. So I said, well, that gave me, you know, a chance to say, well, I can make some money. Just even if I go and I get, you know, I don't qualify. So then I went for another one that 
it's something with the heart, you know, they give you some medication and see how it, you know, does it make your heart beat better, whatever it was, you know, I went there and finally I went there, I had to get there on my own, I took all the tests, I mean, the tests were really, you know, a lot, the blood work, ultrasound of the heart, EKG, so many tests, so finally, you know, I got, I called and they said, Nope, you didn't qualify. I said, why? I'm too healthy. So I said, that's good. When they look for healthy volunteers, so I said, man, I already had tried for another one, and I went there again. They picked me up and brought me back. It's kind of a good ride. So I took all the tests and all, and I did qualify. I was surprised that I qualified. It was for the knees, you know. My knees weren't bothering me that much, but according to them, it was. So it's like six months, this, you know, this clinical trial is for pain, you know. And so I, I passed that and they gave me a smartphone to use for this, you know, to keep a diary of the pain. So I got that. They gave me a, a MasterCard. Can you believe it? A credit card. That's why I'm mentioning all this. I'm getting a credit card now. It is a credit card and it's a debit card. And they put the money on there every time you go. Like I went one time, the first time it was $100. The next time it was, I think, it was 350 because they gave me well, all the blood work, x-rays, and then plus an injection in the knee with some, it's either placebo or some kind of medicine or something. You don't know. So then at home, I'm taking, every time I go now, it's like $100. And they put it on the card. So I have a card now that I can use. And it helps me to, I can use it here because there's a portal here where I live. I can, they take credit cards so I can put it on there towards the rent. So I keep going, you know. I'll go a couple times a month unless I have to. And they have other clinical trials there. Once I get done with that one, I'm pretty sure I can qualify for another one. There's a whole bunch of them there. I like the idea that they pick you up and bring you back. Plus, I'm getting all the tests. Remember, I'm not paying for them tests, and I wouldn't even know. I got the MRI. They took you know took me someplace else for that. And you know my knee, you know the test knee, the one that they're you know testing. I didn't think it was that bad, but it said that from one to four, I'm a four. That that means I could need a knee replacement eventually. So I found out all that that I wouldn't even find out. So I'm just saying, I mentioned all that now because it shows you that, you know, you want credit, you need the extra money, and you want to build your credit. But look at that. I, they're given a, a credit card, a MasterCard. And, and I, don't, I won't be getting billed or nothing. I won't be getting no calls or nothing like that. No late fees or nothing. It's money that I earn by making myself a lab rat or a guinea pig. So, I'm going to try to end this now. I think it's, I, you know, I talked enough about it. I have a lot of videos that I've been making. This is part six of this one that I call The Invisible Man versus Merrick Bank and the Robot. Plus, I have other videos on there besides. If you look up on, I think it's on YouTube, and you punch in harassing phone calls, these all these videos will probably come up. Because I have a lot of videos. If you punch my name in... <coughs> You punch it in Frank Leeper, <coughs> L E E E P E R, <coughs> you know, on YouTube, you'll probably get, you'll see all the other videos. I had a lot of videos the last few months, not just this. I'm only doing this now because of this case, you know. I'm trying to get to the bottom, you know, till my lawyer tells me to stop this, I will, because whatever he says, you know. But in the meantime, I guess because I am advertising him too, you know, I'm promoting him, so. Of course, I guess it's all right with him for now. I said, you can look up all you'll see. I, I put everything else I was doing on hold in a sense, you know, like on the back burner because of this. I've been giving all my time for this right now because I want to let people know what's going on. Because I know this is not so much about it now, you know. You don't hear too much about the credit cards that much. You hear about robocalls, though, yeah. So I think President Trump, I think he signed a bill at the end of December about the robocalls that the phone companies can start to try to block some of those calls. So, 
And I also contacted the Attorney General of Pennsylvania. He answered me that he's going to he's going to contact Merrick Bank. They're not going to like all that, you know, because it makes them, you know, like it shows them in a bad light, you know. I think that's about it. I hope everybody enjoyed this presentation, and I'll be you know I'll be doing some more different ones. I may re, you know, repeat some of the the videos I've done already in case you miss it because I know when I put this on, you know, when I post this, it right away gets a lot of views, of course, because other tweets come on afterward. So between this and the next time I put something, it's already off of there. You know, if you hadn't seen it the first time, and as you have a chance now, I covered everything pretty good here. So you could look at any one of them, and you're going to get pretty much the same information. I might say it in a different way. This is just like as if, like here, when I'm by my, since I'm by myself here, a lot of times I'll, I'll discuss it, you know, to myself. I'll be talking to myself in here. That's the reason why when I do this, I figure, well, I may as well make a video, you know, rather than do that. That's not like rehearsing it in a sense, what I want to discuss. But I'd rather, you know, better just to videotape it and put it out there and all that. Let everybody, you know, listen to it, you know, if you want to. And this is going to be in the description. I'll put some more stuff. Pretty much more about, you know, the information about the lawyer and all that, you know. And plus my contact, too. I'll put my email and all. In case anybody does want to let me know if they have a problem, you know, with it. You know, I'd like to, I'm interested in it. You can, you can contact me anytime you want, even through the, through the Twitter and all. You know, if there's anything... I do get some response and people say they like the, the video and all. But see, they only saw the one at the time they saw it. But there's quite a few of them. You know, they, they say this is this is part six. Or, or just this that I've been doing with this Invisible Man. I know I kind of like this one. Because I'm, I'm hiding behind a disguise. Just like Mary Bank is hiding behind the computer, the robot, you know. Because there's no, you're not... You're not seeing anybody, you're not talking to anybody, you know. So I decided to do that just for now, you know, because this, this was uh, Marie, I guess it's like maybe 20 years ago. Marie, you know, saw me wearing this stocking cap. He says, Frankie, aren't you uh, cold out there when you're shoveling snow? I said, yeah, a little bit, your face and all. So she went ahead and cut eye holes, you know. And uh, she stitched it up, and she says, wear it. I said, I'm not going to wear it, you know, when I'm walking around. Some of you might think I'm going to rob a bank. So she laughed and all, and I said, okay, I'll wear it when I shovel the snow. So where I worked at, I was shoveling the snow, and I have a camera in the window recording all the time, you know, for security purposes, for surveillance, and I was shoveling the snow, and it's recording it. And I know it looked like I said the movie, well, it looks like The Invisible Man. Because the way the infrared camera was, and the way the color of that, you know, that's knitted hat was, you know, it looked like that the way the light hit it. Well, I posted that also. That's on that's on YouTube. It's on some videos. You'll probably see it because if you punch in my name, like I said, you'll you'll see that one. It was one of the ones I was shoveling snow. So this is the same. The same mask I was wearing. So I decided to use it here. You know to do these videos. So again if anybody out there. If you need help. Best thing to do. Is contact the lawyer. I'll give you his name again. The one I've been using. He's, he's really good. Hope, be glad if he'll take your case. You know, If it's Merrick Bank. I know he'll take it. And a lot of other banks that he, he deals with. So his name is Paul Mankin. M-A-N. K-I-N. And it's a toll-free number. Free consultation. 800-219-3577. Again, I'll repeat it. 800-219-3577. So give them a call. Nothing to lose. And you'll get a free consultation. And usually he's a secretary there. Or he might answer or a recording. So I think I'll leave it at that. And if anything happens here, anything, I'll, I'll update it again, of course. I don't know when. 
you know, these cases take time, but whether if I win it or not, I'll let you know. If anything I think of that comes up in reference to this with this Merrick Bank, in this case, I'll let you know. Thanks for your time and have a great day.